I come from, let me just stand. I, I come from, from the last colony of, of, of the world, that is called, it's Puerto Rico. And we've been, uh, United States invaded us in 1898, and, yeah, 1898. Uh, and since then, we have been, uh, we have a lot of people that have fought for the, for the freedom of the country. We have uh, uh, 111 years of colony. And I really, I, I, I really can uh, quite uh, see the point, you know, your, uh, I can really <laughs> compel with you and, because we have a lot of prisoners now. There are two, and, but there were different other prisoners that were sentenced by uh, Seditious Conspiracy too. And it, it was not, and it's still, they, they are still in prisons in the United States, and they have changed in different prisons, so the family can't just get to them. They have, at the same, they, uh, the FBI just killed one of the, one of, they just, uh, in Puerto Rico in 2006, uh, uh, one fighter for the liberty too, and, uh, and they just let them, this blood. We, we need you to finish, please. Yeah, I just want to know. Uh, I just want to know what, what do you think about that? That that's just going on right now, I and mean, it's just keep going on about the government. That the uh, independent struggle that's taking place and has been taking place in Puerto Rico is very much uh, on the agenda of the movement, going back to the time that Pat was describing. It was very much in the forefront of their thinking as to um, acting in, a, in support of the independent struggle. And many of us here on this podium have represented as attorneys and as supporters of the independent struggle of Puerto Rico. And uh, uh, Filiberto Ojeda Rios, who was the person uh, being referred to who was murdered by the FBI, shot and allowed to bleed to death over a 16-hour period in 2006, was incarcerated at uh, Hartford along with Pat and Ray and was part of that. There uh, was a clemency granted by Clinton in 1999, which uh, allowed many of them to go back to the island. Unfortunately, there are two, Carlos Alberto Torres and Oscar Lopez Rivera, who are still rotting in American prisons and who also need to be released. Hello. Uh, I was wondering if uh, there's any evidence now that, um, based on the historic uh, nature of this trial, has there been, uh, at least I haven't noticed that there have been any other seditious conspiracy um, uh, attempts by the government. Uh, are there any? Is there any evidence that this trial has been pointed to as um, uh, with regard to any other um, um, attempts at, at, at uh, legal action? There was there was in one in Arkansas and Washington after after this case, but I think. Um, it seems some of what the government is doing now is declaring people enemy combatants and not giving them trials, uh, and, and taking it totally outside of the civil judicial system, which I think, as, as horrifying and dangerous as the seditious conspiracy prosecutions are, these are even more so, and because uh, pe people aren't given trials. So, you know, you look what's going on in Guantanamo, in Bagram, uh, and American citizens even arrested here and not given the judicial due process. So it's, it's entered, let's say, a new qualitative phase that we have to also fight against. Hi. Um, thank you for your uh, notes on Puerto Rico on Filiberto. Um, I just uh, would like to say, uh, don't you find it interesting that this uh, racketeering law uh, that was in within the 1968 uh, Omnibus Prime Act. It also, it's like a dumpster actually for a bunch of other acts. Um, it's also where the um, wiretapping originally to uh, keep wiretapping to be done on illegally on just regular um, uh, people, regular citizens. It's also the same, <laughs> Um, 
um, act that is used to wiretap actually to do the uh, the um, the act for spying on people when Bush uh, made it three times he changed it and it's also uh, used also for the laws to well, the Second Chance Act of 2007. The, uh, your observation is interesting because many of the laws that are used against the movement, if you will, originated before Bush. In fact, what Liz was talking about earlier, this whole sedition concept, is, was a very ancient law that was rarely used. It was used during World War I, mostly to prosecute uh, anarchists and the IWW, the Wobblies, and fast forwarding to what you're saying, is that 1968 Omnibus Crime Control Act did establish the framework under which, even more so now, your civil liberties have been compromised. Uh, wiretap is one of the things uh, that is most troublesome, and essentially, we who do federal criminal law understand that there really is no Fourth Amendment in the United States. That's another day and another discussion. Notwithstanding the victory in the Ohio 7 case, uh, there is warrantless wiretapping and warrantless uh, arrests and warrantless searches of homes all the time and very rarely are the fruits of those illegal activities suppressed by a judiciary which is not acting independently of the executive branch. Hi, I'm sorry. I just want to make a comment, uh, two comments actually. One that would clarify the question that was asked initially about uh, several speakers at UMass who have been shut down, quote unquote. I would have to say that if you look at the record, Don Fetter, a conservative speaker who spewed, who was invited here to spew Islamophobic, racist hate, shut himself down in the face of First Amendment, excuse me, First Amendment protected protest. That's a fact. And secondly, I just want to commend the panelists here today. Um, as a member of the UMass community and uh, as a student and a graduate student, I'd just like to say that it's, it's vital to stand up to instances of what I would call a new McCarthyism. Um, it was evidenced outside on the lawn. It's evidenced by some folks in the room. And I think that it does not have a place at a public institution. The, the folks here are here to present a serious discussion, to spark serious debate about serious issues. And it's not a question uh, of simply shutting them down as a knee-jerk response. And I think that folks who are concerned with academic freedom need to actually stand up and say, look, we're not going to tolerate this on this campus, period. 